everybody, welcome to Calvary Church. My name is Jeff and I will be your online host for today. Well, we trust that you had a fantastic Christmas. Wasn't it great that we all got together online for our Christmas Eve service? I don't know about you, but I am so looking forward to what God has in store in 2021. If you're new with us here at Calvary, we'd like to get to know you a little bit more. If you wouldn't mind finding a way over to our website at calvaryptbo.church forward slash I'm new or find your way to our home site at calvaryptbo.church and find the I'm new button. Fill up the form there and one of our pastoral staff will be happy to get in touch with you to let you know of all the things that are happening here at Calvary Church. Well, Calvary Church, I hope you're ready. For the next hour, we're going to be singing some songs of worship, reading some scripture, and this morning we're going to be hearing from Pastor John Mark as he brings God's word. So as we head into some songs of praise and worship, we'd like you to prepare your hearts for what God has in store for your life today. So if you're able, why don't you stand, whether you're sitting at the couch or sitting on a chair or wherever you might find yourself, and let's just begin to engage God where we're at right now. Let's pray that God's got something incredible in store for you as we worship together.
without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in Without you, 
Well, I fall apart And you're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Where sin runs deep your grace is more Where grace is found Is where you are Where you are Lord, I am free Holiness is Christ in me Oh, where you are Lord, I am free Christ in me Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay so teach my song so teach my song to rise to you Temptation comes my way When I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Oh and when I cannot When I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Calvary Church, let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for what you have in store for us as individuals, but we're also so thankful for what you have in store for Calvary Church. Lord, I pray during this season, as we celebrate the birth of who you are, or may we share the beautiful message of faith, hope, and love to our community, to our neighbors, to our family. Lord, during this season, May we also be aware of those who may just need, Lord, a special message from us, a word of encouragement. May you encourage us and challenge us to do so. I pray over the next few moments as we sing some songs of worship and as we are challenged by your word today, may it just reside deep within our heart. Lord, we're so thankful for who you are and what you have in store for us. Amen. Even during this COVID times, we have some great things that are taking place here at Calvary. 
One of the ways that you can find out what's taking place about our kids' ministries, youth programs, or our adult life groups, you can head on over to our website at calvaryptbo.church and find the Ministries tab. There you'll be able to navigate all the things that you need in order to stay connected. If you call Calvary your home, we want to encourage you to be a part of what we're doing here at Calvary. And one of the ways that you can be a part of what we're doing here is through your tithes and offering. God reminds us that it's our tithe and our offering that we give to the local church so that we can do what we need to do to impact this community and the global community as well. There are two simple ways that you can give this week. First way is that you can go online at calvaryptbo.church and find the little blue icon that's located on the bottom of the website. There, you'll be able to give and follow the simple prompts. The second way that you can give is through e-transfer. You can email us at donations at calvaryptbo.church. And church, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness during this season. We cannot do what we are called to do in this community and the global community without your sponsorship, without your support. Okay, church family, it's time to get comfortable as Pastor John Mark brings the word this morning. So grab your Bible, your notepad, or wherever you take notes to remember what's going to take place. His message this morning is New Year, New Phase. Now pull out your Bible and read with me 2 Corinthians 5, 11 to 21. This is what it says. It's the ministry of reconciliation. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but we are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, is it, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. Catch this, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if, everyone, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. See, this passage brings us on a faith journey. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians, and we're, we're going to break it down a little bit here, but it's this, a perfect overview of the gospel message in, this, in these short uh, few verses. And it also gives us a really clear picture of our purpose on earth as Christians. You know, something that I've learned is that life is full of different phases. So many different phases. 2021 was its own phase in itself, and there's so many phases within that alone. But maybe you can think back to when you were a teen, and you can think of all the different hairstyle phases you went through. You know, I think about my dad and looking through pictures of my family, and I can see the mullet phase. Or you look at my mom in the perm phase. Or, you know, Pastor Paul showed us pictures of his frosted tips phase. And the list goes on and on and on, and there's all these different phases we go through. Or maybe it's the type of music phase you listen to. Maybe you were really into heavy rock or it was soft rock or it was rap music or pop music. See, our lives are just a series of phases and COVID has enough phases for a lifetime in it. I'm sure we can all agree on that one. But phases are often just an outward change that results in temporary changes in our lives. Phases are usually temporary. And listen, we have a new year Thank goodness, coming our way this week and it's an opportunity for a new phase for us, for a change to begin. And change is a good thing. Change is inevitable, but change is something that you do. Catch this, change is something that you do. Transformation is something that you become. And, tr and transformation is something you become, meaning it's not temporary, it's actually sustainable. And when you encounter Jesus, you become a brand new creation from the inside out. This is supposed to be transformation, not just change. 
So we're going to look at the journey of transformation, of transforming from the inside out. Verse 14 of what we just read says, For it's Christ's love that compels us. That is the starting point of our transformation journey. Because hear me on this, okay? What you are full of, you will be controlled by. So it's Christ's love that compels us. So what you are full of, you will be controlled by. In other words, if we don't take care of what we consume, eventually what we consume will consume us. What or who takes up the majority of your time? What or who constantly, what you're consuming on your phone, what you're consuming on Netflix, on podcasts, on the TV. If we're not careful, our transformation from the inside out will actually stop and become a temporary phase if we don't monitor what we are full of. So what we are full of, we will be led by, controlled by, and compelled by, which leads us to phase one of three phases we're going to walk through in our transformation journey. Phase one is the encounter phase. Becoming like Christ starts here. Our greatest pursuit in life is to simply know God. And I love this quote by J.I. Packer. It says, there's a difference between knowing God and knowing about God. When we truly know God, you have energy to serve him, boldness to share him, and contentment in him. Verse 16 says, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. So what's this result of moving from knowing about him to knowing him deeply? How do we know we've, ha- we've made that change in our heart? Well, I don't think that it's just an outside temporary, like my actions or the words I use change uh, for a temporary amount of time, right? For a week or a month or two, you do really good, and then it starts to fall apart. But it's actually a change that happens from the inside out right? Because when we, the encounter face is so important, why it's so important is because information doesn't lead to transformation. Information on its own is not enough. And it's just that worldly view like we had of Jesus before we knew him deeply. You think of the disciples before he gave them the Holy Spirit. They know a lot about him. He was their rabbi. They, he was a good person and they knew about him. But it wasn't until he gave them the Holy Spirit that they really knew him on a deep level. So they had all the information in the world. But information doesn't lead to transformation. It's in proximity. It's in proximity to God that truly brings us perspective of him. Proximity brings perspective. How do we grow in proximity to God? To know him deeper? We, we grow in proximity through prayer. Through encountering God through prayer brings us closer and in proximity to God. When we pray, we grow, we grow closer to him. And listen, this is really important. Over the last eight months, you've still been getting information from church. Church is filled with information. We've been able to continue to provide information through our online stuff and through all these things, cool new technology we've been testing out. And we've been able to give you information about God. But so many conversations I have with students, with leaders, with other pastors, is this this whole conversation about how God is far away how he's not with me, he's abandoned me, I'm lonely, I don't know what to do, I feel tired. Why is that? I think it's because information isn't enough. And distance actually creates distortion. When we're distant from somebody or when we're distant from God, we forget what he's done for us, what his promises are for us. We forget who he says we are. And in that distance, we have this distortion of who he is. And then we believe that he's far from us. We believe that we're lonely and that we have, that he's left us. See, you maybe didn't stop learning about God through COVID, but maybe your prayer life took a backseat. And even though you were getting some info, (laughs) distance was being placed between you and God. If you can commit to one thing in 2021, my challenge would be for you to pray more. As simply as that, just pray more. To be intentional in that. To become close to God to know God, to be transformed by God. And an encounter with God always leads us to repentance. So that's how we know we've encountered him. And when we veer off the path of transformation, we actually enter a path of destruction. But encountering Jesus leads us back, leads us to repent, leads us down a path of purpose. So how do you know if you're in the encounter phase? Well, it's kind of like I love to relate it to falling in love. 
right? When you fall in love with somebody, when I fell in love with my wife, Natalie, I remember I would do pretty much anything to see her, to be around her. I would do crazy things. I'd wake up early to see her go to class. I'd wake up early and travel across the country to go see her. And I would do crazy, crazy things. And if you can, if you can remember that moment in your life, and you remember when you accepted Jesus into your heart and began the journey of transformation, it was kind of like that. You jumped at any opportunity to serve. If someone asked you to come early to church to serve as a greeter or in the parking lot, you were there because you just wanted to serve because you loved him so much, because you were close to him, because you were falling in love with him. But, but why, why now does waking up early on a Sunday to be a greeter at the door seem like a burden? Why does waking up now to even just get to church and not just watch online feel hard and like a burden? Can I say that maybe, maybe it's because we need a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit? Maybe we actually need a fresh encounter to be reminded of our first love again. See, the journey of transformation from the inside out starts here in the encounter phase. We have to encounter him so that we can know him deeply. Then we move to the establish phase. Verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. In this phase, we're moving away from the old life. We're actually entering into an inside-out transformation where the new is taking over. We are establishing a firm, stable foundation to work with and build on. Our old life is gone and new life begins. And what does this tell me? This is what I think it tells me, that there's actually a life before Jesus enters us and one after he does. So now it's not just about repenting, right? We encounter him, we repent, but it's not just about that. It's actually about becoming now. You know, in a good evaluation, if you are in this established phase, is to ask yourself this question. What's different about you, your life now that you're in relationship with Jesus? See, your life should be different. It's a new life. Our lives should not make sense to unbelievers if we're truly living out the way that God is asking us to live it out. See, something needs to be different. In this ministry of reconciliation, the scripture passage that we just read, this is what God has called all of us to. This is now the priority for our lives. It's a great filter to filter everything that we do through. And that's the difference, right? When we are in this new life, it's thinking outwardly. We're thinking about others. We're thinking about our neighbor, our hairdresser, our friends who don't know Jesus. We're thinking about how we can bring them back and reconcile their relationship with God. So the new life is all about that. The old life was selfish, focused on you. The new life is all about others. And, and this is really important, and I want you to hear this. Jesus didn't die just to get you into heaven. Jesus died so that you can bring heaven down to earth. So we establish a basis for our lives that allows this to become a reality. We change from our old ways in order to draw people into this right relationship with Jesus, to bring reconciliation, to bring redemption into the world. You see, Jesus begins this fire inside of us when we encounter him. We encounter him, we're filled with the Spirit, and we have this fire that lights. But it's our responsibility to establish a foundation that fans that flame. So how do we do that? Well, we can commit daily to spending time with God in prayer so we can grow in proximity and reading our Bible so he can speak to us through it. We can also do that in multiple ways that the church provides, like joining a life group. And how does that work? How does that help you fan that flame? Well, it brings you around people who are like-minded, who are trying to grow as well, who can keep you accountable, who can be close to you, who can call you out, who can call out the good things in you and, and help uh, go do this journey not alone. How else that we offer? You could join a team. You can serve. You can find a place to use your passions to serve. And, and I, I've been telling my youth leaders and my students who serve at a youth group this, this sentence here, and I think it's so important, that to serve is to be like Jesus. And if you fail to serve, you actually fail to be like him. We're trying to be more and more like Jesus, and he came not to be served, but to serve. So when we serve, all we're doing is being more and more like Jesus. How else can you do this? Well, engage with our online services engage with them. Don't just watch it, but actually take it in. Reflect on them. Worship when we worship together. And don't just observe all the things that are happening, but actually participate. So this transformation journey starts with this encounter phase. We encounter Jesus. Then we begin to establish a base, a foundation that's built in him. Then we move to the equipping phase. In equipping, what is equipping? 
Equipping is training and acquiring the tools you need for the mission in front of you in order to live out your purpose. Verse 18 and 19 says this. It says, All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. He was bringing redemption. See, we have a God-given purpose for our lives when we are living in his will. We are called, this is our purpose, to actually reconcile people far from God and bring them close to God. But what's unique about that? If we all have the same purpose, what's unique about that? Well, the uniqueness in this is how you specifically are called to do that. Because we all have a different role to play. We all do it differently. So don't stop learning about yourself. Don't stop discovering what you're passionate about and what you enjoy and how God has made you unique because most likely that's exactly the way he wants to use you. And why is it so important that we get equipped? Well, verse 20, I'll key in here. It says, We therefore are Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. See, we are Christ's ambassadors. This is why we need to be equipped, because God is actually making his appeal to the world through us. See, remind yourselves daily when you're not happy with your job or you're not happy with where you are or what is happening in your life. Stop thinking about what you do or what's going on. Think about who you are. You are Christ's ambassadors at every moment that you have him in your heart. Don't forget that. How do we get equipped in order to be this ambassador? How do we get equipped to do it properly? The only way we can is through the Holy Spirit. I love the story in John 20 and moving into Acts 2, these couple of passages together. And we watch the disciples who are afraid, who are literally hiding after Jesus was taken uh, captive, killed on the cross, and then raised to life. And they're hiding. They're afraid of the Jews and what's going to happen to them. And we actually watch this journey where Jesus comes back after his resurrection and, and brings them the Holy Spirit and talks to them and tells them what they're going to do. And we watch in Acts 2 them get filled with the Spirit. And we watch Peter specifically move from this, just this, this place where he has all this information about Jesus. He knows he's a good person. He knows he's their rabbi and this great teacher. We watch him move from just knowing about him to the truly knowing God through the Holy Spirit. And we watch him become this fr- afraid person who's locked away to literally going out and speaking and saving 3,000 people that day. And, and I said this earlier, but some of us need to just flip the page on 2020. We need to move on from this phase of our life and intentionally focus on encountering God again. We need to get back to encountering him daily so that we can be equipped by the Spirit to live out the purpose he has given each of us for our lives. So within this transformation journey, we have different phases. And the tension we need to wrestle with is not ever getting comfortable in any one of these phases. And some of these may last months, some of them days, some of them hours. And you may actually go through them all in every single day of your life. But how do we know what phase to be in? I think this is a really good passage. John 4, 34 says this. It says, Jesus says, The food that keeps me going is that I do the will of the one who sent me. You see, what satisfied Jesus was actually complete obedience to God. And I think obedience to God will actually satisfy you too. So your job, be intentional to obey. In the answer of what phase you should be in should, should come when you're intentional to obey and surrender to him. So why is it so important to know that, to not just change temporarily, to have temporary phases, but to actually strive for transformation and actually change from the inside out? Why is this important? Because this is what I actually believe is the biggest danger to the church today. It's not COVID. It's not anything crazy happening in the world, I think this is actually the greatest danger. I believe the greatest danger is not that we will actually renounce our faith. It's that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. This is exactly what the enemy wants. Christians who are content to do nothing, content to just sit in one of these phases, to face no opposition, to settle for comfort always, do what's best for them, not what's best for the kingdom. This is what the enemy wants. And and I think about that, and I can't help but think about the passage in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 says this. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. 
He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name, we drove out demons and in your name performed many miracles. This is what Jesus says. He says, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. See, this passage scares me. And I'm not trying to scare you, but because often I know that I could be doing more. I know that, but my pride and my comfort and the, the busyness of my life gets in the way. And I end up doing what's best for me. And maybe not actually what God's will is for me. I think we need to understand this, that ignoring God is rebellion against God. Ignoring God is rebellion against God. And every day, by accident, I think a lot of us do this. I know I do it sometimes. If we're not intentional with our lives, we ignore him. And sometimes we wonder why our life is the same and hasn't changed in 10 years. Or why no breakthrough is coming. And maybe, maybe it's because we're not transforming from the inside out anymore. We become too busy. We become too busy to have actually forgot to ask God what he wants for us today. Where is he asking us to be obedient today? Who is he asking us to talk to? Who is he asking us to show love to, to bring hope to? Do you know that answer? I think we often ignore his promptings in the name of busyness. And we think we're doing the right things. We, we could be the perfect Christians from the outside, but we're actually ignoring what he's asking us to be obedient in today. See, 2021, this week, this is an opportunity for us not to just enter a temporary phase that lasts one or two months, but it's actually an opportunity for us to establish a base foundation that helps bring us to living out our design purpose every single day. So how do we respond? How do we respond to this message? How do we respond to this passage of scripture? For the new Christian, for the person who's searching, I think this is where you start. I think you need to be intentional to move from this knowledge of God, you know a lot about him, to knowing him personally. Spend time growing in proximity to him through prayer. Intentionally seek out opportunities to encounter him in your, on your own, in your house, on your walks, and corporately with us at church on Sunday mornings, or if there's a prayer meeting, or whatever we offer in this new year. Be intentional to seek out opportunities to encounter his presence. If you've been a Christian for years and, and you, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years and, and you've been doing a good job, but it's been kind of, you know, stagnant. I would say to you, do your best to identify how you can better obey God. Think about what things from your old life, pre-Jesus, you may still need to let go of in order to move into a new, sustainable life. Focus on where you need to obey and surrender it because that is what God is asking us to do daily. And for those veterans, for people who've been a Christian for 40, 50, 60 years, you know, we commend you and, we, and I say, keep on going, keep serving, keep leading by example. We really do need you. You are so important and integral part of our church. And I would just ask you that in 2021 to be intentional, to remind yourself of your first love, why you became a Christian. Thank God for what he has done for you and what he's brought you through. And if you're struggling to do this, then, then just go back to that encounter phase. Get reacquainted with the Holy Spirit. Continue being equipped so that you can live out your purpose and bring more people into reconciliation with God. You see, no matter our age, our job is never done. No matter our age, our job is never done. As long as you have a breath in, uh, in you on this earth, you have a purpose to serve. It may change how it looks. But if you're eight or you're 80, you are just as valuable to the kingdom of God. And your job is to bring heaven to earth every single day. We don't grow out of it. Through the words you speak, through the things you do, and everything, remind yourself, be filled with purpose, and align yourself with God's will in this new year. Dear God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you love us. God, we thank you for what you brought us through in 2020. God, there's been so many stories, there's been so much to celebrate within all the chaos. And God, we pray right now that we would just encounter you. God, that you would bring your spirit into our lives, into our living rooms, into our hearts, that we would know you personally and deeply this year, God. 
that we'd be able to just look at this year and, and, and look at it as this establishing moment for our lives and for our transformation journey. God, we thank you for who you are, what you've done, and what you're doing in and through us and in and through this church. God, we give this year over to you and we ask that you would just come in new and powerful ways. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor John Mark, for challenging us not to get stuck just going through the motions in our relationship with God. I don't know about you, Calvary, but there's so much that we can learn from what Pastor John Mark has taught us this morning. I trust that you're challenged. Remember, here at Calvary, we're all about coming alongside you in your faith journey as you follow Jesus. For practical ways and learning how to live out your faith, you can head on over to our website at calvaryptbo.church forward slash next steps. Or you can also email one of our pastors found on our pastoral staff page. I want to encourage you. Let's just take the next few moments and discuss the reflection questions that will appear on your screen. Use this time and pray and ask God, God, how do you want me to receive this word today? How will it impact my life? What can I do to better my spiritual journey with you today? Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Calvary. We pray that you felt encouraged by the songs that were sung, the scriptures that were read, and the wonderful message from Pastor John Mark. We so look forward to connecting with you as we move ahead into the new year. So bless you. We pray God's peace upon your life today. Take care.